How you doing, folks? Well, um, you could be forgiven for uh, saying that uh, I get entertainment out of the weirdest things. Um, and um, my latest project just arrived in the post today, so uh, I'm absolutely delighted and I'm going to do a Will It Run video on it. So, um, wait till you see this. In this box here is a Briggs & Stratton 2 horsepower engine. Uh, it's upside down kind of at the moment, so uh, it literally is just after arriving, so I took the lid off the box and uh, kind of had a quick, had a brief look at it and said, right, let's get it out into the garage. But, wait until we see this. Now how cool is that? Now it's kind of backlit there, we'll get you, out, get you into the sunshine over here, look. I love it. Let's uh, let's get stuck in and um, try and see if we can fire it up and get it running. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put it on some sort of a base. I have a wooden board over there that's going to do the job absolutely perfectly. Then we can check and see if it has engine oil in it, and we can see if we have a spark. And um, pop a bit of fuel into it, pull the cord, and see what happens. Okay, so I have it now uh, fixed onto this board here. So. Um, that's uh, step one, and I've also uh, put some engine oil in it because there was none in it. So uh, that's fair enough because it was um, it was sent by post. I'm also taking the spark plug out, which I just noticed is hand tight, which is handy. And it's actually quite clean, so it's all uh, it's all good so far. So it's just uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just spray a little bit of lubricant down into the um, down into the uh, bore there, just to make sure that. Um, it's all well lubricated before we uh, spin it over. I will use my trusty oil can actually, which has a little bit of engine oil in it. So, so that's that's fair enough. Just four squirts there is enough just to lubricate the cylinder walls before we spin it over. And we'll pop that back in there. Okay, so hand tight is enough for the moment anyway. So let's just see if how we're looking. Feels like it has compression. It's pulling over quite easily. Some description of compression there. What we'll do is we'll do a compression test in a few minutes. But to be honest with you, at this point in time, I just want to throw some petrol into it and see if it'll actually start. So, can of petrol here. So we will have a go and see what happens. Smart money's on it, not starting at all yet. So. Here we go. A bit of petrol in it. I haven't even checked to see if there's a spark. Okay. Now, so you pull this to choke is now on. It pulls over really easy. Okay, so we're not getting anything. So let's test back you guys up a little bit and we'll have a quick look and see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pop the uh, pop the air cleaner off. I'm going to have a look down there. And then I'm going to have a look and see what, uh, so, let's see what we're getting as far as the spark is concerned. We're not getting a spark. Then we do we do have to get in deeper in this. Okay, so the screw comes off there. There's a little carburetor with an integral tank. And so I'm not entirely sure. No, it's hard to yeah. Okay, so problem number one. The uh, the end is broken off the HT lead. So um, it's never going to start like that, but um, what we will do is, for the moment, I will just take the end off. I don't actually have a new end for it, so I'll just take the end off and I'll just wrap the wire around the uh, top of the spark plug and we'll uh, see how we get on that way. So. I 
I really need a bigger toolbox, folks. I can never find anything in this one. Here we are. I don't know what this engine was used for. The the guy who I bought it off actually, I did ask him, and he said that he just uh, his his brother does a house clear out, a garage clear outs for people who have passed away, and uh, this is one of the things that was picked up in that. So unfortunately, that doesn't uh, kind of really give us much of a clue as to what um, what the origin of this engine was. Apparently, the gold engines that uh, Briggs and Stratton made are. Um, uh, basically, uh, they would have been replacement for original equipment engines, so um, that would uh, that would explain what this is then. But uh, whether that's true or not, now I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we need to strip back that HT lead a little bit as well too. You can see uh, the the wire is actually broken off it as well too. There was no way that was going to fire at all. So um, we we'll start by doing that because unfortunately in these engines the points are actually under the flywheel, so they're a bit awkward to get at. So we'll uh, just get a, um, I think I have a little wire the thingy there which will do the job nicely. So we'll, I'll come back to you now in a second. Okay, I'm actually just using a Stanley knife here now just to pare back some of the uh, the insulation off the, the end of the wire, or the end of the, the, the end of HT lead. Um, now, so there we go. So that's a little bare end there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, ah yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, uh, the spark plug is not much use either, so the, the end just broke off that as well too there, so okay. So we're not gonna get much much life out of that either. Now so we need to we need a replacement spark plug. Unfortunately I don't have one that's that size. We might be able to just pop that back in. It actually does the it's kinda weird. The it's like the that piece there is treaded. And <laughs> that's a funny setup. So a funny setup of a spark plug. It's not actually broken. That just treads down into the the uh, ceramic. So, okay. Well, fair enough. Then we'll, we'll do that. That's what happens. That's what'll happen. So okay. Oh, don't don't want to do it up too tight as well too because. I know exactly, you go about shutting this engine off, I haven't figured it out yet, so if it starts and goes waltzing across the garage floor, I want to be able to turn it off quite easily. Uh, trust me, I... Well, it's one, it would be one thing the Lister engine doing it, it's another thing this engine doing it. The Lister engine is a little bit in the heavier side of things, but this uh, this one I don't think... I think I could probably catch it, it would be like catching a football or something. Although, mind you, I'm not much used to catching football, so... All right. Let's bring you back back over here because the backlighting is not not helping much. So, right. So let's hope we have a spark now. Um, choke is on. We've got fuel. So let's see what happens. We try a bit of easy start, folks. Let's do that. this that doesn't help there's no spark there no way Okay, right, so let's pop the spark plug out and see what we're getting. I was kinda, that was kind of wishful thinking on my part, to be honest with you. So uh, we'll take out, take out off that little uh, kind of collet type thing on the top of the spark plug. Take that out. Take out the, take out the plug all together. Alright, now let's have a quick gander and see what's going on here. So, I 
this is where this is where I get an electric shock now watch Not a thing. Okay, right, we've no spark. Well, I kind of thought that was going to happen. Right, so that's the, that's the next thing to sort out. So let's have a look and see what we can do there. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to take the uh, the uh, pulley, um, uh, the, the fan shroud off and have a look and see what's going on there. So let's get our uh, tools out. Remember, folks, an American engine. The Imperial. So, I'll get out my crappy uh, Imperial tools. 716. Oh, yeah. Crack them with the ratchet first of all. Just undo them with the ratchet, what do you reckon? There's one out. These are a great little engine if you want to, if you ever wanted to show somebody how an engine actually works. Um, these are a great little engine to learn on, especially because they're side valve. Now I'm looking at this um, this engine, one of the things I've noticed is the uh, the inlet for the fan is completely stuffed up there. So hopefully it wasn't operating too long like that because if it was, this engine is going to have overheated. And uh, that's definitely not good because the cooling air is sucked in there behind the, the, behind the pulley. These are obviously air-cooled engines, you know. Okay, so the intention now is take this off. Wow, some dirt. God almighty. What has happened in here? <laughs> God only knows what this engine was used for. I know I was always intending to take it apart anyway to clean and service it. Like the fact that it's just turning over. It looks like feathers. I don't think it is feathers, but it certainly looks like it. Whereas, as I said, you just don't know what this engine was actually used for, so. God on it, thank God on the nose. Right. So, what we need to do now is we need to take off that. Um, uh, that flywheel because the flywheel is um, the, the points as I said are in behind the flywheel we need to clean up the points so first need to, do you know what it is? this is kind of sticky stuff whatever it is it's like a god I don't know what it is it's gross anyway and I can tell you now the engine was getting no cooling with, with uh, covered and all of this sort of stuff so yeah that's the magneto there, by the way. That's what generates the spark, and there's a magnet on the outside of the um, the outside of the flywheel, which uh, runs past the magneto and uh, generates the electricity. So what size is that going to be? These are those really annoying sockets that it's actually very hard to see what sizes they are on. So you take off the. Uh, the mesh. I'll give this a good clean up as well too. I'd really love to know what this engine was used for. Probably a, a vacuum cleaner in a hen house or something like that. Although it's like cotton or something like that. Look at that. That's... It's completely stuffed up the engine. 
And God knows what the air filter's like, I haven't even looked at that. Something tells me this engine's not going to be in the best condition inside. Now, I do not have the... There's, a, there's actually a, a suitable socket which you're supposed to use for undoing this. Uh, but I don't have it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a few taps of the hammer, which will hopefully undo it. Um, Right, so the first thing I, the first thing that happened when I looked at it was the starter plug fell apart. So, <laughs> so that's a, that's another issue now. The other thing as well too is I don't actually know if this is left hand thread or not. So, um, it's, uh, your guess is as good as mine on that. I'm sure there's plenty of people screaming at uh, screaming at me, telling me now, but I don't know. So I'm trying, trying to just kind of figure it out as I go along. Well, part of the learning curve. Let's see now. That. See if that won't go around. Hey, it won't be doing that anymore. I think I need to go and buy myself a few special tools for these. Right. Okay, there's a bit more work involved in this engine than I thought there was going to be. So, uh, all right, we'll 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 tear into it. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking at this stage, uh, at this stage of the game already, I'm just stripping it. But once I get uh, once I get that off, I would like to start it first. Top of the piston looks nice and clean anyway, that's something. Um, I was actually able to just tap that free. Alright, so let's let's go a bit further. So we need to get in behind this now. Get a pry bar. came off quite easily actually. And so that's flywheel off after I got banjaxed by my heavy handedness. So in behind here is the in behind here is the points. So what we need to do is we need to take off the points cover. You can pry out there. There we go. Oh my god. 
the hits just keep on coming. Look at this. What the hell? It's incredible. All right. Let's give that a clean up. <laughs> if I get this engine running, I'll be very, very surprised. Okay, so the points aren't uh, the points aren't actually opening and closing, so uh, that's uh, obviously another issue. They're just about opening there now. Okay, so maybe maybe they're intermittent. So uh, we shall. They're gone very furry looking anyway for a start, so we need to open them right up. And you guys can have a look and see here. Or maybe not. I'll bring you back again. There we go. That's what furry points look like. Now you see one of the one of the contacts is actually on one side of the condenser on these, that's basically the way they work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little file and I'm gonna just basically draw it across them. And uh, clean them up a little bit. And hopefully, we'll get a spark. Deoxid, by the way, brilliant stuff. Okay, and so we pop the cover back on and pop the flywheel back on. So, cover goes on like this. It's like a horrible version of it. What do you call it? Um, uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. At least not yet, anyway. It's early days. So. Okay, so let's that back on. Stick our flywheel back on. After we brush it off. I'm going to give that a bit of a clean after me knocking one of the bloody veins off it. But anyway, such is life. Um, give that a give that a good clean, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm just putting the starter clutch back together here now, and uh, it seems there's one of the balls missing, so I'm gonna actually have to find a um, suitable uh, ball to go into it. So there's three, four, five. I, I'm sure I should. I'm sure I'll be able to get a um, uh, get a bearing or something like that and disassemble it and take one of the balls out of that. So I'm not too worried about that. At the moment. So let's uh, clean that off. That's the cover plate for it. Just give it a little wipe. As I said, this is just to get it started and then you can kind of get into more detail and with it afterwards. It needs to go back in. A rubber seal that goes on this. Okay. 
Unfortunately, this little engine has been neglected. But don't worry, I'm here to save it. That's why I bought it. I wanted to fix her upper, so this is kind of a nice little project for me now to keep me out of the pub, out of the mischief. I think the cover's actually a little bit bent. Yeah, look, it'll be all right for the moment. So let's let's get that back on there. At least we know now it's not left hand thread. So that can go on there. A couple of little taps without breaking any cooling fins again. Because that would annoy me immensely if I did. We'll give our uh, cooling screen a clean because at least we can get some air out of it. Okay, flywheel and starter clutch are now back on, and the zoom button is too close to the record button on that camera, which is kind of annoying. So, uh, so we now have a reasonably okay starter clutch. You're not supposed to be greasing, it's supposed to be a light oil actually, um, as far as I can tell anyway. Let's give it a little bit of a brush off here. Take some of the, some of the dirt and crap out of it. Okay, there we go. Now, yeah. right. As I said, we're not gonna we're not gonna get too ahead of ourselves here. Let's uh, just get get this, and brush this out outside, and uh, put it back on. Okay, let's see if we have a spark now. So we'll try just a wire first of all. switch on this or something. Now I'm starting to wonder. Right. Oh. Well, we're not getting any spark at the moment, but um, that's not to say there isn't a, there's a wire coming up here. Right, so. Let's actually just pull that wire off. So that wire should ground out the coil and stuff. Getting a very, very weak spark. Like, uh, as in so weak that it probably won't work. But what we'll do is we'll just throw the spark plug onto it again for the moment and see. does it tries to kick or anything then we'll know. So let's have a go and put, put you guys back here. Now let's see what happens. Choke is on. So where are we at now? So I think basically at this point in time, will it run? No. Not yet anyway, not without a bit more work. So uh, I think uh, I think I'll leave it there for this video because uh, I need to, um, I have other things to do let's just say. But uh, it's nice to know what we're dealing with anyway and straight away I can see uh, it's a 
very dirty engine, it needs a lot of love and attention. But before we go, let's just try it with a bit of, a bit of easy start and see if we actually get any, any life out of it that way. Partial choke. Try and nip up the spark plug. Could be losing compression, you wouldn't know. I'd say it probably needs every bit it can get. So, tighten that down. Okay, yeah, unfortunately we're not having much luck there, are we? At least we kind of have some idea as to what we're dealing with now anyway. So, um... Next thing to do is to take the carb off, give it a good clean. I know what hell that, that spring is supposed to be attached to the governor. I think it's fair to say it's not doing a whole lot. Um, So far we've got no ignition, so need to find out what's going on there anyway. Still up. I think it'll be a fun project. So um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll pick it up next time and I will, uh, I'll do a bit of research into what's, uh, what's actually going on. Um, I'll try and find out how to measure the resistance of the, um, uh, the uh, magneto as well too and make sure that the windings are all intact in, in there as well too because maybe that's what's actually wrong. Um, we might just stick a set of uh, set of points and a condenser in as well too, and um, clean up that carburetor. But uh, for the moment, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give it a good, a good hose down and well, uh, clean with some uh, brake cleaner and that as well too, and try and get some of the dirt off the outside of it, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.